So hamstring strains, one of the most common injuries that we're going to see in our physiotherapy clinics. But what exercises do we use to rehab them? That's what we're going to look at today. Let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So hamstring strains. Let's start with some numbers. We've got this brilliant systematic review from Manny R. et al. 2023, and they looked at the injuries that occur in field-based team sports. And out of the 6,000 injuries they looked at, they found that 10% were linked to hamstring strain. So out of all the injuries that could possibly occur, 10% linked to the hamstrings. That's huge. And what it tells us is that these injuries are incredibly common, but also they are really prone to reoccurrence. When someone has a hamstring strain, they can be vulnerable to experiencing it again in the future. So what kind of exercises do we need to do for these patients? But first of all, when do these hamstring strains tend to occur in our sports patients? Well, first of all, our patients will commonly describe a particular trauma, a specific moment in the match, in the game, where they can remember that their hamstring got injured. This is commonly occurring when they are on a long stretch, as you can see with Harry Kane up here, or when they are sprinting or suddenly decelerating. But nevertheless, they'll have this clear moment in their mind when they grab the back of their hamstring because they felt that sharp shooting pain going through their thigh. So when they're in your clinic, you'll find that they may well have pain when you palpate the hamstring and they may well have shortened range of movement, particularly where they feel that they can't extend their knee because that puts their hamstrings on a stretch. You might even find that their hamstring is bruised or discolored based on the amount of pain and inflammation that they have. And of course, resisted hamstring tests will be painful too. So moving on to rehab, a couple of initial principles to mention. First of all, we know that the hamstrings do a combination of hip extension as well as knee flexion. So you'll see that both of these movements are incorporated into our exercises. Next, we know from this brilliant study from Mendigusha et al. from 2012 that actually a reduction in the strength of the gluteal muscles may lead to an increase in activation of the hamstring muscles, potentially making them more at risk when the glutes are weak. So therefore, we will definitely want to think about gluteal strengthening as a part of our program too. And as we mentioned earlier, recurrence of hamstring strains are incredibly high. So we really want to make sure that our patients can definitely do these exercises really, really well and can do them consistently with high levels of strength before we push them back out on the sports field. Because otherwise, they do become vulnerable to going through the same painful process again. So make sure your patients are really strong. So the first set of exercises we wanted to show you are some isometrics. Particularly, these are relevant for your patients who are in lots of pain. Perhaps they have a more severe injury and they want some gradual exercises to get started with. So isometrics. First of all, we can look at something like an isometric hamstring curl. This is where your patient will be lying prone. They'll simply bring one leg over the other to resist knee flexion for a period of around 10 seconds. And I'd look at five to 10 repetitions. Next, we can look at gym ball hamstring curls or even heel slides because they go through a similar process. Here, lying supine, your patient can drag their heel towards their bottom, pressing down on either the gym ball or the floor to create an isometric contraction. Once again, 10 second hold between 5 to 10 reps. Then we can also look at a glute bridge in a short lever position. Here, we're lying supine, raise the hips up with work of the glutes and the hamstrings together, and then you're going to hold that position for 10 seconds, 5 to 10 reps. The longer the lever, the more focus on the hamstrings. So use short lever to start with. So on to stage two. Here we might start to gradually increase the amount of concentric activity of the hamstrings with a natural amount of eccentrics as well. Now for exercises, we might start with a similar one we saw in the isometric section where we have our hamstring curls with either a gym ball or heel slides, but with some concentric hip extension built in. So here, our patient's lying supine, pushing their hips up into a bridge position, focusing on dragging their heel back towards their bottom. Here, we might look at 8 to 12 reps, 2 to 3 sets. Then, we might repeat that glute bridge we saw earlier, but with a longer lever, starting with our heel further away from the bottom, because this will increase hamstring activity. It will also make it much harder as an exercise. Once again, 8 to 12 reps, 2 to 3 sets. 
Then we might look at something like a hip hinge, a fantastic exercise for the hamstring muscles. Here, our patient is gonna be standing up and they're gonna focus on bending at the hips, pushing their bottom backwards as their weight lowers towards the floor. Important to have a slight slack in the knees, but try to not make this a squatting pattern. We still wanna focus on pushing the bottom backwards. Eight to 12 reps, two to three sets. So in the next stage, I like to think about increasing the single leg activity, really focusing on that affected leg so we can get it really, really strong, as we said. So exercise wise, we can start with things we've looked at previously, such as a single leg glute bridge, as we looked at before, but purely on one leg. You can start with a short lever with the heel closer to the bottom to start with, and then push that heel further away for long lever, more hamstring biased exercises. Eight to 12 reps, two to three sets. We can also look at something like hamstring walkouts. This is a really tough exercise if done properly. Here we have a bridge position and then we step our feet away from our bottom and that's going to elongate the hamstrings. Start with baby steps and as your patient gets stronger, do much greater steps for more activation. Now this might be something you start with 30 seconds, progress towards 60 seconds for two to three sets. And finally, we want to think about that standing component as well to really get hip extension. So here we might think about something like a single leg hip hinge or a single leg Romanian deadlift. Focus on bending at the hips again, but maintaining a single point of contact through the one leg, which will also work on proprioception, much harder for the hamstrings. Eight to 12 reps, two to three sets. Then we can start to really ramp things up, really focus on adding load to these exercises. So for example, we've looked at that single leg bridge a few times. This time we're putting them in a long lever position. And of course, we can increase some weight into that to really bias those hamstrings. Once again, eight to 12 reps, two to three sets. We then may look at the single leg Romanian deadlift, fantastic for the hamstring muscles, and this time we're including a weight. And naturally we can build that weight up depending on the patient's strength. Eight to 12 reps, two to three sets. And then Nordics, these are fundamental for the hamstrings. Now we can't focus on these only, but they are a really good one to bring in, particularly for that eccentric control. As you can see here, Hold the patient's ankles and allow them to slowly descend forwards. Eight to 12 reps, two to three sets. I also love these kind of high speed activities because they really mimic that sprinting type pattern as you'll see when your patients get injured. So I've got this really good exercise where you lie your patient and you ask them to really quickly kick and contract their hamstrings to kick against a gym ball. A fantastic exercise to really bring speed into the process. 30 seconds, progress to 60 seconds for two to three sets. And then finally, think about your sport specific or return to activity kind of exercises. So whether it is running, football, basketball, whatever the patient sport is, try and get them slowly ingrained back into their training. Now we have this fantastic study from Duhigg et al, which looks at running and talks about the importance of building in a gradual systemized period of increasing the distance of their running rather than suddenly doing so. Now in this study they talk about a time frame of about four weeks but generally speaking we can think about this principle for all of our exercise and it shows us that a sudden increase in activity is not right for the hamstring muscles because they're too vulnerable and reoccurrence rates are high. And particularly as we said focus on the mechanism of injury that put things in perspective originally. So if it was to do with sprinting when your patient injured their hamstrings, see if you can get them sprinting to make sure they've got that psychological confidence as well. If it was to do with stretching, then make sure that they can do those high level eccentric kicks to really get the movement right so their hamstrings can cope with eccentrics. Once again, it's all about putting the patient in the best possible position to prevent recurrence occurring. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribe to the channel for all our best content. Otherwise, we've got loads more on our Instagram account at Clinical Physio and on the website clinicalphysio.com. I'm Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.